Do you struggle to find food on campus? Uh, not particularly. I do not. No. No, I don't. Yes. Not really. I usually just eat at Rocky Top, and that has most of what I need. I'm just a picky eater, so I guess, yeah, I did. <laughs> um, I don't struggle to find food, but it's not great. Do you have a meal plan at UT? Yeah, I have the, um, the unlimited plan with $300. I have the seven, the seven meal swipes a week, and then I have 500 dining dollars at the beginning of each semester. I'm a freshman, so I have the unlimited with 300 dining dollars. Um, I have one with my sorority this year, but I had a, this freshman one last year. Would you say there's not enough central locations to get dining on campus? I definitely think so. I, each time I go, I have to go out of my way to get something to eat. Yeah. Yes, because I have a lot of friends in Clement, and they just pretty much just eat, make like microwave food in their dorms and can't go to like Rocky Top or Stokely because it's too long of a walk. Do you feel like there's any dietary restrictions that need to be better represented in the dining halls? Well, I mean, I'm probably not the best person to answer because I don't have any myself. I feel like they do a decent job with allergies. I don't really know if they're like need to make more like lactose intolerant options or something, but I never had any problems with it personally. I would say so. No, so I have a friend, and he's actually allergic to, like, gluten, dairy, and all these different things. So there's only, like, one spot for him. Like, he has to go out his way to get uh, certain things that I feel like he shouldn't have to. I I'm on a vegan diet currently, at least at the dining halls. I don't have that much of an issue finding food. Is purchasing food on campus more expensive than you feel is necessary? Yes. Um, I would definitely say the food and like snacks in the pod market are for sure more expensive. I do feel that it's more expensive than is necessary, uh, especially food options at the pod market off the top of my head. They're quite a bit more expensive now, uh, preventatively so. Do you know about the Big Orange Pantry? Uh, I do not know. I do not know about the Big Orange Pantry. I've heard about it, never been over there though. Yeah, I've like heard about it, but I don't actually know anything about it. I have heard about the Big Orange Pantry. Um, I don't know much about it, though. Welcome back to Vault Talk. I'm your host, Drew Hamlet. Welcome to our last episode of the semester. And for our last episode, we're sitting down with Blake Weiss and Johanna Ram, the Basic Needs Program Director and Coordinator from the Dean of Students Office. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, of course. Um, so my name is Johanna Ram. I am the coordinator for basic needs. Um, I'm also a full-time graduate student here. So full-time graduate student, full-time professional, all the fun things. Um, so I'm studying higher education. So hopefully we'll stay in it um, and just enjoy being on the team. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Joe. I'm Blake Weiss. Currently serve as the program director for basic needs in the office of the dean of students. I'm new to this role, uh, so I started in October of this year, uh, but not new to UT. Been working at UT since uh, January of 2020. Um, so excited to talk more about basic needs work at UT. Yeah, I love to hear that. So, what does the basic needs team do specifically? Yeah, so we um, work very much as a team, and we oversee a lot of different initiatives between the two of us. Um, but we are here for um, all of the students basically their basic needs here on campus. You know, if you can't do your studies, if you are thinking about your food insecurities, your housing insecurities. So um, a new team to UTK, um, it used to be different roles on campus had these jobs and now we're kind of centered in on a team of two for right now, but hopefully growing. Mm -hmm. um, and I currently oversee the Big Orange Pantry and a couple of our other initiatives. And I'm sure Blake can talk about his parts together. Um, but as a team, we just collaboratively just work on growing and taking care of the basic needs for campus. Definitely, is there yeah. anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, just in terms of our basic needs portfolio, Joe mentioned the Big Orange Pantry. We also have Smokey's Closet. It's a professional clothing closet that's located on the third floor of the Student Union. We have the Student Emergency Fund. So one time within an academic year, students can apply for grant funding of up to $500 um, for things like if your laptop breaks or maybe you get that unexpected utility bill that you don't know how you're going to pay, um, things like that. And then a couple of cool initiatives I think are probably some of the more unique ones to UT. Um, we have a UT to West Tennessee program that um, students can bust home for breaks. Um, so we just had our first uh, departure and mm -hmm. return um, for Thanksgiving, but then in winter break, um, we stop in 
Nashville, Jackson, and then Memphis, and then make that return trip at a pretty reasonable rate. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got some uh, support for Big Orange Meal Shares and Big Orange Meal Scholarships. So those um, on-campus dining facilities, we offer some support there as well. So that's kind of what we're doing now. But of course, you know, we're always looking for ways to grow and expand our needs for basic uh, needs work. Yeah, and it sounds like it really has grown from the Big Orange Pantry, Smokey's Closet. It sounds like you guys have a lot of initiatives going on. Can you tell me a little bit more how it all started? Like, where did you guys start from the ground up? Yeah, so um, we just came in in August kind of with putting everything under one umbrella term of basic needs. Uh, I was a former graduate assistant last year and I oversaw the Big Orange Meal Plan um, scholarship, the Big Orange Meal Share, and then UT to West Tennessee. So I kind of had those initiatives and then we had a staff member in the Big Orange Pantry role. Um, but they've kind of created and popped up over the last, I want to say, five to two years. Um, thankfully in my role I was able to start with the Big Orange um, Meal Plan Scholarship so it's only two years old, it's our baby and it's where we give students like Blake was saying uh, a meal plan for the entire year so they would um, apply in the spring and then we would get it to them for fall and it would last fall through spring so that's a relatively new one to kind of our portfolio we're growing we first gave out seven scholarships um, this past year was 13 and so hopefully this next year turnaround will get even bigger so that's one of our newer ones um, the big orange pantry started in 2020 um, and so those are just a couple of our newer ones I would say what would you add anything to Smokey's Closet anything like that I don't think so. Smokey's Closet's, you know, had a couple homes. It's actually started in student government. So I think that's really a, a really important part of kind of the work is that it's, it's student voices who are making an impact. So Smokey's Closet starting with student government um, and it was homed in our Center for Career Development and Academic Exploration. Um, very recently, it made a transition into the Dean of Students office mm -hmm. so that it could get connected back to basic needs work and not just focus on the, necessarily the the professional clothing but even expanding even further than that and so you know all of our programs and initiatives seem to have kind of started as as one um, but right now we're kind of really working hard to kind of connect them and connect the dots because if a student you know doesn't know where their next meal is going to come from they may not be able to pay their rent and might not be able to have the professional clothing they need to get a job to pay for all those things on a more sustainable basis and so it's really connecting all of those dots to make sure that kind of that holistic support um, students have to take advantage of yeah you guys have a huge role on this campus yeah. and it's crazy how your team is only both of y'all <laughs> <laughs> could you talk a little bit about your individual roles as coordinator and director yeah like do you want to go first sure um, so the good news is is that we've got a great office at a dean of students that we work within and so we've got a huge dean of students team um, that manages a lot of um, just connection points across campus um, student advocacy um, work um, and then even just some of the uh, other like student disability services, the Pride Center, all kind of in that umbrella of Dean of Students work. And so the, the fortunate part is it's not just the two of us. Um, and fortunately, there's a lot of people across campus that also, you know, work to support this work like faculty as well. Um, in my role, I'm personally responsible for um, the operations of Smokey's Closet. Um, again, with that new transition into the Dean of Students office, um, it's, you know, definitely a learning curve. Um, it's a, really a retail space if you haven't been up to the third floor of the student union. Um, it's a really cool um, it's not, you know, a closet. It's, it's more than that. It's a boutique <laughs> almost um, with a lot of clothing options. And so, you know, how does it, managing all the volunteers that come in and support our space, um, that's kind of a big part of my role. Along with student emergency funds, um, it's a pretty delicate and sensitive kind of process for students to access emergency funding, especially with financial aid implications and things like that. And so those are kind of two big pieces of my role to make sure that um, they have the oversight that they need. And then, of course, working with great folks on my team like Joe and a lot of our volunteers um, who kind of help us keep our operations open. That's a big chunk of that. And then education and outreach. Um, so right now, I think basic needs is a new term for a lot of folks on campus or across the country in higher education. And so the opportunity to talk with faculty, talk with staff, talk with people in Knoxville about how they can support Knox, uh, UT's community um, to support students. That's a huge part of now that we've got two full-time folks in this roles, in these roles, um, how can we kind of expand our education on the topic? So that's kind of my area. Yeah, absolutely. And going off of kind of what Blake was saying, um, I sometimes think just having conversations with students, they might not think that they are in need of some of our services, but we really don't have any process of like, you have to disclose anything like that when you come to use the pantry or anything like that, because we just want to be open for all of our volunteers. Um, so we don't want you to put yourself in a box just because like you have some money for food doesn't mean that they're the most nutritious, the most beneficial like mo uh, food you can get. So um, just kind of educating students, whether that's with staff and faculty, just the one-on-one -on -one conversations when we're tabling, 
just kind of having those conversations that you can stop by the pantry no matter like if you do know where your next meal is coming for but like maybe it doesn't have veggies in it maybe you're out here eating ramen we want to make sure that everyone has access to all of the good stuff that we can give um, just because we are a really big community so you might as well take advantage of it you know um, so I also we do a lot of things together when it comes to like tabling outreach we um, have a student manager as well who works with us a lot in the big orange pantry and that's something I primarily focused kind of on overseeing, getting the volunteer operations. We're thankful to have such a big community in the sense that uh, we are like almost completely staffed inside the pantry with volunteers. So we have um, about six volunteers coming in and out of the pantry each day, plus our student worker. And they're the ones who are waving hello at the, the front desk when you come in, helping me take things out of the boxes, moving things in and out. So um, you can always find me in the pantry. I always say, if people are looking for me, I'm like, you can guarantee you I'll be somewhere in there. Um, and then I often oversee the UT to West Tennessee initiative we have that Blake was mentioning with the bus systems. And then we collaborate on the scholarship. And then our big orange um, meal share is where students can apply for five, 10, or 20 meals. And that's something that kind of goes hand in hand with learning about the pantry, because sometimes you just need a quick swipe at the meal. Um, center and just kind of get that meal or sometimes you want to take something home if you live on or off campus so I like to kind of tie those two in together um, because sometimes they can serve the exact same student so that's another piece that I kind of look over. Right and then to focus on your role with Big Orange Pantry how would how prevalent would you say food insecurity is on UT's campus? Yeah I think um, especially with the pandemic a lot of students are kind of facing maybe impacts on their financial aid or maybe just on um, the money that they're getting in general when it comes to jobs. And so we've seen a huge in, um, uptick in numbers, I would say. Um, we were looking at last fall and it was around like 500 to 1,000 students. And then already this fall, we're only at the beginning of December and we've seen at least 1,200 a month. So that's rounding us out at already like 4,000 to 5,000 students. Um, and we're also open to faculty and staff members as well. So our pantry is not just for students. So we also see staff members coming in, faculty members. And I kind of think that helps students because they can maybe possibly see a staff member in there and know that it's not something too embarrassed about, nothing to be ashamed about. Like we're just grabbing food, grabbing the next meal. Um, we work in really high collaboration with the Culinary Institute as well. Mm -hmm. We have what's called Food for Balls program. And the Culinary Institute takes um, food from all over campus, from like the dining halls, that kind of stuff, like bags of potatoes, meat and stuff, and then they transform it in ready-to-go meals, and they are hearty meals. We enjoy some lunches in there, um, like there is gumbo in there today. So it's just something that students can grab, pop in the microwave if they want, take it home, freeze it, and you know that you'll have something like a full, ready, packaged meal. It's not small and it's like pretty hearty. So that's another initiative that we have that we really enjoy. And so we see staff members coming in and grabbing those as well. So. For sure. And then what can students do to prepare for winter break? You know, we're going to be away for six weeks and we don't have that available at home. Yeah, well, we will be here, most definitely. <laughs> um, we've shortened our hours, so we're usually open four days a week from 12.30 to 5.30. So now we will be 11.30 to 3 p.m. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So our same days of the week, just shortened times. And we're offering the same services. Students can still come in, grab the food that they need. Everything's still going to be there for them. Um, and we also are doing appointments as well. So say those 11.30 to 3 doesn't quite work with your schedule, just shoot us an email. We'll be there. Um, we're usually there till 5.30 p.m. So a lot of our staff members, when they get off at 5, you know, that 30 minutes of being open is sometimes helpful for them. So we just ask them to shoot us a quick email and we can set that up as well. Um, so all of those, are, those options are available. Do we have anything else for, yeah. for what you can think of? We piloted a really cool program um, during Thanksgiving break, so we yeah. weren't able to be open when the university's open, mm -hmm. um, which is unfortunate, but you know, staffing is really challenging sometimes when the university's not in operation. But when Thanksgiving came around, we were like, let's take our, we've got some really great big orange pantry um, uh, freezer bags mm -hmm. and canvas bags and with some shelf stable things. And so we actually are gonna have grab and go bags available outside of the pantry, um, as well as some deliveries to residence halls that are gonna be open during the winter break as well. Mm -hmm. So that students are still gonna be able to, even if they can't get into the big orange pantry over winter break, um, there are gonna be some grab and go things outside of the pantry and then at residence halls that are open as well. And so really anything that we can do to maximize our reach and you know have access points for students over those breaks we know just because the university closes doesn't mean that you know you've got somewhere else that you can go and so we really think that's really important to do so I think Joe and I have been hopefully as much as much as we're able um, to on that front to really you know have some resources available yeah that's great and then how can students get involved to volunteer with Big Orange Pantry and your other programs 
Yeah, so we do everything through um, Serve UTK. So we have a bunch of volunteer like slots on there. Um, they're usually for this winter break hours, we're doing two hour shifts and then our usual shifts um, are about, I want to say three hours. So you can sign up for a whole day with us, half a day, kind of whatever works with your schedule. So we try and throw a uh, kind of flow everything through Serve UTK just so that you don't have to like email us something separate. It's just all on there. You get email reminders just in case you like planned for it two weeks in advance. Like we'll make sure you remind, oh, you remind you. <laughs> um, so we try and do everything through there. If it's like larger groups, we've had a few larger groups come through mm -hmm. with Smokey's Closet and Big Orange Pantry. And they're the ones who just give us an email, kind of give us a heads up of what number they're working with. That way we're able to like have maybe a project in mind for them so that everyone kind of gets that like hand-on experience. But Every day something a little bit different. Today we were breaking down boxes, putting a lot of things out on the shelves. Um, Monday it could just be welcoming guests, getting online orders kind of set up. So every day is a fun day. It's always something different. We've got a good flow of um, consistent volunteers who come in. So it's kind of nice to see their faces. Patrons will see their faces and recognize them. We have good conversation. So it's really nice to have like some very consistent volunteers who just love being with us. Um, but we're open to the whole community to volunteer, whether that's staff, student, faculty. Um, we've had some off-campus people as well pop in. We also get the women's basketball team. They volunteer with us a lot. So mm -hmm. it's really kind of cool to see them on the court and then in the pantry as well. So we kind of were expanding everywhere and just kind of getting our name out there so more and more students know about us can either volunteer or if they're in need of our services, they know where to find us. For sure. And then is there a way to donate, not even specifically volunteering? And then are there any donations that y'all need for the holidays? Yeah, it's a really great question. So fortunately, um, UT just had a huge big orange, um, the, the day of giving mm -hmm. um, was a huge impact, especially for our um, student emergency fund. Um, all of that, I think we raised uh, over $30,000 mm -hmm. for the student emergency fund, which was really, really generous. And I think so far we've given $30,000 in student emergency funds out this semester. Um, so really it was replenished very quickly in, in one day. Um, but we do have um, a Vol Starter um, campaign for the Big Orange Pantry and the Student Emergency Fund, um, and we're listed um, there. And so that's really the best way to give is kind of online. Um, I don't know what the website is, but I think it's giving.utk.edu. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a really great, you know, financial resources is really great volunteer and support. That's how we mm -hmm. keep our doors open. Um, and then going into the winter, I think we're always looking for unique and creative ways to get fresh produce into our uh, on our shelves. Um, that's a huge piece that just really goes quickly. And so um, I know there's a couple local farms and folks that really um, benefit, but I think that's probably a big area. That and hygiene products. I think hygiene products go mm -hmm. so quickly. Um, toothbrushes, toothpaste, uh, menstrual products, all of those I think are probably the biggest demand that we see. Um, we've got a lot of shelf-stable foods um, for now, but I think those are the big kind of high priority things going into any break. And then it's Smokey's Closet right now. It's a professional clothing closet, um, but again, some of it is material or clothing that might work for the winter. So sweaters, jackets, um, those are always in need, especially during colder months. And so I think that those are kind of big priority things right now. Yeah, for sure. Is there anything else either of you would like to add on that? I don't think so. I think we've got really active um, social media accounts. And so if you're interested in volunteering, um, Big Orange, at Big Orange Pantry is our Instagram handle. It's a great way to get connected. Um, and Smokey's Closet, at Smokey's Closet as well. And so um, definitely some updates coming very soon as we turn into the new year and build out our team. But be sure to check those out for um, you know updates as we kind of grow and expand and hopefully support um, students' basic needs across campus. Definitely. Well, thank you, Blake and Johanna, for being here, and thank you for watching Vol Talk this season. I've been your host, Drew Hamlet, and we'll be back next semester. See you then, and have a good end of the semester.